I have a bunch of new and some updated apps I want to talk about that take advantage of the new interactive widgets and standby modes in iOS and iPadOS 17. In fact, I have so many apps I want to cover, I'm going to have to turn this video into multiple videos because it would just be way too long. This video is sponsored by Factor. Let's get into it. Widgetsmith is the best app for creating custom widgets and it got interactive widget support. One of my favorite features is it brings the classic cover flow view from iTunes to the iPhone and iPad. In here, you can add different albums and playlists to it. You can customize the design as well. Once you add the widget to the home screen, you can tap on the various albums and playlists to rotate through your music. Tap on the center icon to start playing music. This is a great way to have quick access to music you enjoy listening to. Widgetsmith also got support for an interactive calendar. This syncs with the built-in calendar app so you don't have to re-add anything. You can tap on the various dates to see your different appointments for those days. There's also a few different photo collection widgets. In these widgets, you can tap on them to cycle through your various photos. There's even a drawer option that allows you to jump between a photo widget and another kind of widget that you wish. If you go with the large widget, there is a tile game in here that's similar to threes that you can play right on the home screen. Launcher got support for building standby widgets. I've been using this to run my shortcut that sets the output of my audio to all of my home pods in the house and plays my Apple Music radio station. When running this though from standby, you have to tap on the icon and then tap on the arrow that appears in the top right corner. This will then open the launcher app. While it's a bummer, there's an extra step that you have to do in order to get into the app and to get the shortcut to run. It's nice to just have my phone right there on my desk and have a way to quickly just play music throughout the house. World Clock is, surprise, a World Clock app. I use this in standby mode as the clock widget. Now the built-in clock app does have widgets for standby, but they are all analog faces. And I just have this weird pet peeve about analog clock faces on a computer. For some reason, it just bugs me. It's dumb, I know. World Clock gives me a nicely designed digital clock. There are other widgets which show support for multiple time zones. You can go into the widget settings and change the time zones that are displayed. Home Widget lets you create custom interactive widgets for your smart home devices. There is a built-in home widget for the built-in home app, and it's fine. It gets the job done most of the time. But Home Widget goes further, including having a large and extra large widget, which the built-in home app does not. You can also toggle thermostats and jump right into security cameras from home widget, something you can't do in the built-in one. And of course you can control scenes and lights from it as well. You can customize the widget's color and transparency. This is what the first party Apple home widget should have been. One of the most interesting tidbits of interactive widgets is somebody brought a bunch of games specifically to be widgets. They're not even like full blown apps. Like they're just there as a widget. There's checkers, four in a row, a slide puzzle game, tic-tac-toe, but my absolute favorite is Minesweeper. You can just have these right there on your home screen and play the games as you're swiping around on the home screen, or you could just sit there and fiddle with it and play whole games in a row to kill some time. In fact, right before I started recording this video, I saw that Pixel Pals just came out with a big update that is literally putting like a full blown game right on your home screen. I, I haven't really had a chance to play with it, but I'll put a link to that in the description below because it's pretty cool. This video is sponsored by Factor. Factor is an excellent meal delivery service. I rarely cook. I'm busy, I'm running my own business, but on top of that, I'm a terrible cook. In fact, at family gatherings, I'm the guy whose job it is to bring ice. They don't ask me to cook anything. With Factor, I get fresh, never frozen meals that are ready to go. In fact, it only takes two minutes to cook them. And these are not only delicious, but they're nutritional. I've been eating Factor meals for the last week and I've really been enjoying them. Plus, it's really cut down on me having to go to the grocery store, and I'm filming this the week of the iPhone announcement and right before all the OS stuff gets released. I'm busy. I don't have time to go grocery shopping. Factor has a huge selection of weekly meals to pick from. In fact, this fall, they have 34 plus meals every week. 
With Factor, you know you are getting enjoyable meals without any hassle. There's no over-the-top instructions or big pots you end up needing to clean afterwards. Meals are delivered directly to your door and they're properly packaged so you know everything stays safe. Head to Factor75.com or click the link below and use code LOLLY50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. My thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. Dark Noise is my favorite noise app. I absolutely love it. Now, Dark Noise got several new widgets for quickly starting a scene right from your home screen. You can go into these widget settings and specify exactly what sounds and scenes you want to play. There's also a standby widget for quickly playing a scene as well. I can see this being really great if you're somebody that uses like a white noise sound or even like ocean or rain sounds to fall asleep. You could just put your phone on your nightstand, let it switch over to standby, hit the button and let it start playing those noises. But how I've been using it is I put it on my desk and I will start my scene that I use for just when I'm doing like heavy focused writing. Music just doesn't work for me when I'm, when I'm writing anymore. I don't know why. It's very distracting to me, but dark noise is what I use when I'm writing. Overcast is my podcast player and it got an interactive widget as well. This gives you the option to play a few different podcasts that are in your queue. I find this really handy on my phone, especially when I'm just wanting to pick up from whatever I was listening to. I often just throw in AirPods when I'm cleaning around the house or cooking or things like that. Glucomate is a beautifully designed app for tracking your blood glucose levels. Now, for those that don't know, I'm diabetic. Uh, so I have to monitor my blood glucose. Now, my condition is fairly minor. It's not severe at all. So I just have to keep an eye on it and, and make sure that, you know, things are going good. Now with this app, I can log my blood glucose level and it will track those trends and it'll show me, you know, when I've been high, when I've been low. But what's really cool is it syncs with the health app. So not only is it tracking your blood glucose level, but it's also tracking when you work out. So you can see the trends of when you work out, how your blood sugar is going down, when you don't work out, hey, your blood glucose levels rising. You know, that's really important information to diabetics. Of course, there is a widget for tracking your blood glucose levels as well, which I, if you can't tell, I'm absolutely loving widgets right now. Cheat Sheet is another note-taking app, and this one is a little different. It's, it's designed for quickly creating notes, but displaying that information for you. So you can assign a cheat sheet to a widget and it would just be right in front of you. Now, this is great if you just need to get something out of your head, write something down during a meeting, or if you just need to jot down something like a phone number or an address. But Cheat Sheet got support for standby, and I think this is really interesting because for me, when I'm working at my desk, I'm not using my iPhone. My, my iPhone is pretty much useless to me when I'm working at my desk because I have my iPad or my Mac. So I've been putting it in standby the whole time to display information for me. Cheat Sheet could show me a note with like relevant information like, Hey, here's these numbers I need to call. Hey, here's this task list I need to do. Hey, here's, you know, whatever piece of information that you need to have in front of you could be really interesting. I could also see this being really nice for like, hey, I'm gonna fill out a cheat sheet for stuff I need to do first thing in the morning. Okay, put my, my phone in the standby mode, go to bed, wake up, and then, hey, cheat sheet's right there. So first thing in the morning, I'm reminded that I need to do X, Y, and Z. It also got support for the iPad's lock screen as well. Tally is an app I mentioned in my iOS walkthrough and it's perfect for interactive widgets. Tally is a counting app, so you can use this to keep track of how many cups of coffee you've had in a day, how many times your kids are annoying you, or just tap the buttons if you need something to fidget with. The widget is a perfect companion to the app. You can even set up multiple widgets for different options as well. Fantastical got support for an interactive mini calendar widget. With this widget, you can jump around to different dates and see your events that you have scheduled. The days have a heat map on them. The darker the days, the more events you have. I really like this because I can see when I'm free or busy just at a glance. Now, the thing that you need to make sure of is that you hit the month at the top and return to the right date. I forgot to do this one time and I freaked out because I thought I missed a really important event. Focusworked is a Pomodoro timer app. I've talked about this app in the past and I really like it for when I need to focus on my work but my ADHD is fighting me. There's something about having a timer constantly running that actually gets me to focus on my work at hand. 
Focus Work got support for live activities, especially now that the iPad has live activities, this is really nice. It also received a new widget so that you can start timers without ever having to go into the app. I really love these interactive widgets that speed up like getting things set up in your workspace. Like it just makes things so much nicer to use. Speaking of timers, I use Timery. This is another app I use to kind of fight my ADHD and my busted brain. Timery hooks into Toggle and whenever I am working, I have a timer time tracking for me. With iOS and iPadOS 17, it got interactive widgets. And of course you can just start and stop timers right from the widget. That's kind of table stakes for it, but the developer took it a bit further. Inside the report widgets, you can jump into different projects or filters just by tapping on them. This refreshes the view so you can view the quick piece of information you want without having to go into the full blown app. Another app category that's table stakes for having interactive widget support is task managers. Every task manager should have an interactive widget that you can check a task off and it just marks the task is completed. One app took another step forward and added a feature that I really like, and that is Things. Things added support obviously for checking off a task and marking as completed. But instead of tapping on the bubble to mark a task as completed, if you tap on the task, it opens the app and it opens it to wherever that task lives, whatever project it's in, whatever view it's in, whatever. It opens it right there. If you're somebody that uses the notes category or subtask, this is really nice because you can just tap on that task from your home screen and see all the details for it. Of course, things also got a standby widget as well. iOS and iPadOS 17 brought us a lot of great new and updated apps. In fact, I'm struggling figuring out what my core productivity apps are going to be moving forward. I'll put links to all the apps and widgets that I mentioned in the description below. I wanna hear from you all, what are your favorite apps right now? especially if they got a new big update with iOS 17. My thanks to Factor for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.